On the morning after her birthday party, Anne Marson Cook made a terrifying discovery. I was really, really scared. It was November 2009. Anne and her friend Howard were standing in an upstairs hallway of her old farmhouse near Belleville, Ontario. They were staring at her computer screen. It was spooky. I'll have to tell you, it was the first time in my, I mean, it was, in my life that, that the hair stood up on the back of my neck because it was a, it was a message directed. Personal. Yeah. And now they knew. The break-in the previous day, the theft of those sex toys, was not a joke. Not even a bad one. All that time last evening, they'd stood right in this spot, deciding a long discussion. Should they call the police or not? They'd figured the cops would just laugh, so they decided not to call. But after Anne spent that night at Howard's and returned home first thing in the morning, this is what greeted her on the computer screen. Go ahead and call the police, it said. I want to show the judge your really big dildos. Eventually, Anne would wonder about those typos. But just now, quite suddenly, she froze. It's almost like he had a gun on my head that moment. This time, they called 911. And as they waited for the police to arrive, Anne and Howard came to a deeply disturbing conclusion. Whoever wrote the message, maybe some half-literate crazy, judging from the typos, must have been hiding in the house the evening before when they debated whether to report the theft. He the was police, listening the to us. The police can't prove that he was there. The police but we said, know. We, we have no evidence that he was there. They'd been talking just outside Anne's bedroom. Down the hall, in this closet, they say, they found evidence to support their chilling theory that the intruder had been hiding there. It was all upside down. Yeah, so he's, you know, he had to be listening to tell a message like that. Go ahead, phone the police. And then, a second dreadful discovery. They searched the house to see if anything else had been stolen. And in her bedroom, Anne discovered all her underwear had disappeared. And that, that was sickening. Anne loved lingerie, owned more than a hundred sets, all gone. Oh, she was a basket case. She really was. I got her right downstairs. Only to make a third gut-wrenching discovery. I said, Anne, we locked that door last night. And she goes, yes. And I said, well, that door's open. She goes, no, it's not. But it was. And then the two of us looked at one another and we started talking about the possibility that whoever was here let themselves out. They had to. The rest of that day passed in a blur. A police officer from the nearby city of Belleville got to the house and got to work. They took it seriously. He did, yeah, because he did. I took him right upstairs and as soon as he walked in, to the office and look what was on the computer screen. He pulled up his mic and he just said, get forensics out here right now. That same day, amid the upset, Anne and Howard had a question for the Belleville police. It was about a couple of disturbing incidents that had happened up the road in a speck of a place called Tweed two months before. Incidents more serious than what happened to her. Incidents also directed against women alone at night. Although Tweed was only 20 minutes away, it was not policed by the Belleville cops. We asked all of them, did they know anything about those? Because we, I said, it has to be connected. And you told the police this? Oh, yes. Yeah, and of course, they said, how do you know about it? You know, we don't know anything about it. They didn't know about it? Well, they didn't seem to, or they didn't want to let on to. But Anne was convinced. The incidents were linked. They had to be. It had to be one person. There can't be that many evil persons around. She says she begged the detective handing her case investigate a connection. I said, please look into the Tweed case. I said, it has to be connected. But then life took over, as life will, and Anne let the matter drop. I pestered yeah, her about phoning. But I was thinking, you know, they know their job. They will phone it. But nothing happened for them? No. My son was getting married, and, you know, like there was a lot of things to do, you know. I was... Life was busy at the time. But Anne was right about what happened up the road in Tiny Tweed. A terrible threshold had been crossed. And then the second one, oh God, uh, everything just went haywire then. 